Welcome to It's Not Letting Me. This video will help you figure out how to set up MLA format using Google Docs. First thing you want to do is create a new document. Go to the line spacing toolbar and change it from single to double spaced. There is no standard font in MLA, but many professors and instructors prefer a formal font like Times New Roman. Change that, drop down the font, and click Times New Roman. Your margin should be set to one inch on all sides. The default setting in Google Docs is one inch. So if you're already, if it's fresh and you haven't changed it, it will be one inch, but you wanna check that just in case. Go to File, Page Setup, and check your size of your margins. So for page numbers, you should go to Insert, Header, and then the header window will open up. Up there in the top, you wanna to right justify your last name and add a space. After the space, you want to then go back into insert and say insert page number. Depending on your instructor's preference, you can choose to show the header on every page or you can choose to have a different header on the first page. If you changed the font in the body of the paper to Times New Roman, you also have to change the font in the header. So make sure you highlight that and change it to Times New Roman. In the top left corner of your page, using the first four lines, the line to the left, type first your name, and then your instructor's name, then the course name, then the date, using date number, month, and then year format. Hit return and type the title of your paper. Center the title on the page, hit enter, and then go back to left justification to start your first paragraph. Every first line of the paragraph should be indented at half of an inch. That's the default setting in Google Docs. Throughout your paper, you should put longer titles in italics, but put shorter titles in quotation marks. So if it's a book, it's italics. If it's a poem or an article, it would be quotation marks. You should use one space after a period. If you type your whole paper and you realize that you're in the habit of using two spaces after a period, what you can do is use the find and replace function. Go to find and replace, it's command F. Edit, find and replace. Open find and replace, and inside the find menu, have it find, period, space, space, and replace it with period, space. Hit OK, and it will replace all of your double spaces after sentences with a single space. For the Works Cited page, you can insert a page break at the end of the body of your paper. Center the word Works Cited. It will continue page numbering it with your last name at the top corner, and then start typing the name of your works in this format. You should use author, listed last name, then first name, followed by a period. Then the title of the source, followed by a period. Then the title of container, comma, other contributors, comma, version, comma, number, comma, publisher, comma, publication date, comma, followed by location with a period. All of the elements in your works cited page should be listed in alphabetical order, of course, by the last name of the author. And all of this should have a hanging indent. The easiest way to do this is to type them all, then highlight all of them, and then you can see the tabs at the top of the page. So highlight all of your work, drag the tabs to half of an inch, you'll see that it moves everything over to half inch, and then take the little tab that's at the top and drag that back to the beginning. That will set the hanging indent at half of an inch so that the first line will be justified left and all secondary lines will be tabbed in at 0.5 inches. Now you have a hanging indent for your Works Cited page. Everything in your page is formatted exactly to MLA standards, and you will get no points off for formatting your paper in MLA format. For more information, we do recommend that you check the Online Writing Lab link down below from Purdue University, which has incredible resources for formatting in MLA, as well as Works Cited references. Thanks for tuning in to It's Not Letting Me. We teach technology tutorials as we're trying to eliminate the phrase, it's not letting me from people's vocabulary. Like and subscribe down below, and please leave a comment to let us know what else you'd like to learn about with technology. We'll see you next time on It's Not Letting Me. It's not letting me. Quit saying that.